in the back of our head here. We once in a great while. He could be a little bit wider than you think, and he might have like seven seven here or something like this. But it would be very yeah, no, that, that, yeah. It would be very Sorry. very strange to see this type of line for a set. Although, uh, at parks, and how deep are you? Um, about twenty five hundred effective, and uh, I'm the effective stack. Twenty five hundred effective. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the hand starts with a uh, hijack open to 30, and I'm on the button with pocket aces. I believe it was um, ace of spades, ace of diamonds. Okay. And I three bet to 100. Okay. And then we get um, the small blind who's like a tight older guy. He cold calls the three bet. Okay. And the hijack calls as well. So hijack opens. You three bat aces. Twenty five hundred effective at ten ten. The small blind, an older guy, flat calls. The power yeah. power move. Three bat call. Yeah. And uh, the hijack calls. Okay. Yes. All right. Yep. Uh, so the flop comes out pretty good. Uh, it's king seven four rainbow. Okay. Uh, so on this board, um, so the both players check to make. Mm -hmm. So um, because it was a fairly dry board, I decided to bet um, pretty small, like one third pot, bet a hundred. You also block ace king. I just it's interesting to yeah. What do you think the small blinds flat calling range? Yeah. So, that, that's, I, so I was I was thinking. I mean, he's pretty tight. I was thinking something like maybe like nine Tens through plus. queens yeah yeah and some like some ace king off suit probably maybe ace mm -hmm. queen suited something like that right right so and it's hard for him figured to, it's like a, what's up it's hard for him to peel with any of those hands that aren't kings in this multi-way even if he's got like jacks right. you know right yeah. but i figured if i bet small maybe he'd get like stubborn with like mm. hockey queens or jacks or something right, right um so so i bet 100 and he calls and then the hijack folds. okay so the small blind calls interesting okay yeah so it's a small one just calling. Yep. I wonder if this so guy once five. in a I wonder if this guy once in a while has king. It's not like you're super deep. Although I guess I don't know why ten ten is just like five ten. So for some reason I think this whenever I see Parks ten ten, I think if it's like ten twenty, it's just no, it's just ten ten, right? Is there a cap on the game too? Um it's it's three K cap. Three K cap. Um okay. it was only yeah, it was only yeah. like my fourth or fifth time playing, so I bought in for two thousand. Like I usually play two five. Yeah. Okay. So um, small small blind calls fold, right? Uh, yeah. Small blind calls and then the hijack fold. Okay. So we're looking at maybe um, a little bit over five hundred in the pot, right? Yeah, like five five ten with the yeah. big blind there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So the turn is a brick. It's an offsuit deuce that completes the rainbow. Okay. So definitely a very safe turn, and then like something interesting happens. So then he decides to lead for two hundred. Oh, I remember this hand. I love these live little spots. So he leads. And yeah. The, and the board is not wet at all. You said it's entirely dry, right? No, no Yeah, flushes. like I would think like if yeah, if like a backdoor flush came in, like like he could have like something like that, like some type of like pair plus flush draw, but like right. none of that like was possible. So like I thought that was like pretty strange. So you know, we might just 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 in the back of our head here, we once in a great while he could be a little bit wider than you think, and he might have like seven seven here or something like this. But it would be very, yeah, no, that, that, yeah. It would be very, very strange to see this type of line for a set. Although, like I said, I put up a YouTube video taking a look at a hand from the live stream that I played on Saturday, quads versus full house, where a guy <laughs> let out with bottom set, got raised by middle set, called, then let out when <laughs> he boated on the turn. <laughs> Which I was like, wow, that's very, very strange. But um, obviously, you've got a couple options here, right? You, like, you could click right. it up here, and uh, you could click it up for a raise, or you could just wait and then just blast away when he checks to you on the river. I prefer, or maybe just call, depending on what happens, but I prefer, um, if the board's super dry, probably just a call. Whereas, if the board is somewhat wet, I like to try to get my value now. The point being is that I've seen these types of things before, although this is starting to get peculiar. 
And sometimes people don't really understand why they're just calling in a spot like this where, I mean, even with like better than one pair, like say they've got like a nutted hand and they're like, oh, I'm just going to call when calling doesn't actually really achieve all that much because the river is almost always going to get checked to them. And then they don't use like the proper sizing to like make up for the value um, by not juicing the turn. I see that a lot here. Right. It's super dry. I mean, I might just call and then kind of see what happens here on the, on the river. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that was, that was kind of my feeling. I'm in position. I was going to call and then I could also kind of evaluate like the strength of his hand by sizing he decided to use on the river. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I just decided to flat the 200. Uh, so hero calls. Someone in the live chat says, I don't Curtis King. I'm not loving this spot because now we can discount queen, queen through eight, eight once he leads. That's true. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. So, so yeah, I mean, you're, you're, yeah, you're right. So, and then the caller has aces. So, but still, yeah, I block ace king, but I think right. I mean, he, 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 he's tight enough where I think he still has like, like six combos of ace king here. Right. Maybe occasionally king queen suited. Yeah. Yeah. There's still enough king X here. Um, for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. So yeah. you call, so the pot's like 900. Yeah. Okay. So then the river, um, it's a pretty safe card. I believe, um, I believe it was an offsuit six. It may have been lower than that. I'm not sure, but I remember it was like a pretty irrelevant. Pretty, pretty card. off. This is an irre- this is an irrelevant card for this hand. Yeah. One of the things I will say too, if people have been with me for a long time, and um, obviously I can tell. Uh, what was your name again? Brian. Brian. That you know, I'm sure you're an experienced player. At least you know if you're playing ten ten. One of the easiest things that I can actually pick up on, especially when I get a lot of crush life calling hand submissions and emails, and also too in the early days when I used to do a lot more private lessons when I had time, is that if people uh, who are just learning or trying to get better, whether they're break even or losing players, they had really, really bad hand recall where they would wash over what a card was because of the, they would wash over like, oh, what the turn or what the river was. And I was like, there's no way like the turn is inconsequential with this particular board. They'd wash over it. Like they couldn't remember what it was, right? Right. Whereas here, it doesn't matter if the river is a six, a five, a four, or a three. They're all equivalent, right? Yeah, exactly. If the river's a four, yeah, a deuce, a three, or a five, it's all the same thing. So it really right. makes no difference the fact that you might not remember it as a six or a five because it has no rel- it has no relevance. It actually goes back to um I, I remember reading an article where they said some of the best grandmasters in chess could remember games from like 30 years ago, or they can remember like thousands of games in their head. Like they'd be, you know, they put them in a situation on the chessboard where they played this game 15 years ago. And right away they knew, oh, this was a game from 15 years ago. Good poker players remember hands like that too. So you'd think, oh my yeah. God, these guys have got like unbelievable memories. But if they put the chessboard in a nonsensical like in a totally nonsensical um, board situation where like a regular chess game could never be in that situation because of the way the pieces are, they couldn't remember where the pieces would be in that situation. But in a regular chess game, they could be playing 50 people at the same time and remember where everything is. So right, that's yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, how to we can sometimes like we we sometimes will fish like our brain works like in inefficient ways, but when people are first starting out, they tend to wash over what actually is relevant. They don't have that experience level. Anyways, king seven four deuce yeah. rivers is six. Okay, yep. Yeah. So now he leads, um, kind of small. He leads like one third pot. Leads for three hundred. So he leads for two. On the yeah. turn. And now he leads for three. Yes. That is very interesting because I wouldn't have expected him to con- – I mean, obviously, if he checks to you, right, you're going to bet like 700 or something or 600 yeah, or exactly, something. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so really, I mean, the question – obviously, you know, here it's a math issue of, well, if he's leading for one-third and you're getting – four to one, right? You got to be good one out of five times here to, to make the, to make the call. So obviously we have at least a call, yeah, but obviously not full thing. But the question here for the math of raising is, is that now the math will move to, am I good here 20% of the time to, am I good here? Like maybe 
60 or 65% of the time where I can take a raise size and get called by a weaker hand. Let's just say that everything he's betting that's worse than yours, right, will call 600 or 650 or something, you know, like that. Yeah. Um, then it really just comes down to basically, do you have the best hand here more than 50% of the time? If, right. if, he, if you raise it up here to 650 and he's going to call with everything that he deems value, do you, is it better to call? Do you have the best hand here between 20 and 50% of the time? Or do you have the best hand here over 50% of the time? I think it's probably close. I might make, I might, I might make it like 650. I don't think you can go really larger than that, though. I, I, it just seems very, very strong. You don't want to get into a situation where um, he basically, there's so much strength. Um, maybe you could maybe make a case for going up to like seven seven fifty, with the caveat that if you were to do that, you have to be able to be capable of folding to a bet three bet. Oh, of, of course, yeah. Well, <laughs> of course, I've seen people bet well, raise no, a call. I mean, I, I, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so what? So what ended up happening? Yes, yeah, so I actually ended up. Yeah, I ended up bumping it up to seven hundred. Okay. Yeah, and then and then something strange happened. He didn't three bet, but he he called like very quickly and like started to flip his hand over. And like at that point, I kind of like, got the feeling, go oh, crap, he's got a set here. And he he did have a set, but it was not the set I expected. He ended up having pocket kings, which I thought was pretty outrageous. How did he just? So the river must have brought in some sort of straight, and he just called. I, I, <laughs> yeah, why was I thinking about this? I was like, because like, yeah, I mean, I mean, if there was a six, like eight five got there, but I don't, yeah, I mean, it could have been like a four, like maybe completed five six, but I was like, or three or something I like was, that. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Like that, but I was, I was like pretty baffled, but like, I mean, I guess I was sort of like relieved later, like thinking about it, like I could have gone broke that hand easily if he like four bets pray and then we get it in and stuff. So. Right. I guess I saved a little money in that sense. So, the, I mean, the river in the, in this particular sense as to why he called might be consequential from his part because it really – yeah, he should never just be calling here if the river's a six. Yeah. If the river was like an eight or a, I guess a three. No, it definitely still. wasn't like a higher card. It, was like, I remember it, was like, yeah, six. it didn't pair the board. It was, I mean, I think it was a six, but it could have been a three or four. I don't yeah. know. But okay. No, I get for, you. Yeah, from my perspective, it was inconsequential. Yeah. All right, Brian, thanks for the call. Appreciate it.